When we imagine AI on screen, we seemingly can't resist the urge to give it a human appearance. When the AI is female, we find ourselves in the world of the fembot, a sexy and often sinister presence. We spoke to Professor Kate Devlin, a leading expert on sex and science fiction, about how the fembot reflects and sometimes challenges our society's gender politics. What's the difference between an android, a gynoid and a fembot? Well, it's one of those things that annoys me when I hear them used wrong, but Android tends to be used very widely to refer to a humanoid robot, but actually it refers to a male presenting humanoid robot. And gynoid is the female presenting equivalent to that. And then what was the third one, a robot? No, a fembot. A fembot. Okay, because I was going to say, even robot is a very contentious term. People are a bit wary of how we classify robots. A fembot tends to be the, the, the slang way of looking at a gynoid. And it's, it's the one that comes out of sci-fi and films, you know, the, the sexy, scary fem, female robot. Fembot is a word that has connotations of something that is perhaps calculating, very sexual, quite possibly a threat. You know, it has th those overtones to it. Okay, so we wanted to, talk, to speak with you about several several examples and any that you you might want to talk about as well. But but particularly Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. you know. I love Ex Machina. <laughs> it's such an interesting film because of the way it just unpicks so many different strands that that are by AI and robots. So, so I'm going to ask you the question that tripped us up about Ex Machina that we, we found irresolvable, which is, is this a misogynistic movie? Ah, uh, well, so that's a difficult one. I think it can call itself a, a feminist movie, which it, it tries to. I think it's defended on that basis, but it's quite a feminist movie. Why? Because, spoiler, the robot wins. I mean, yes, uh, the female robot. There is that. I think it can also be, it can also have elements of misogyny in it. And I, I think it does. It's the culture, right? So it's an entirely based around a whole tech bro culture, which is inherently misogynistic. So I think it, it inherits a bit of that, no matter how much it tries to go against it and mock it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the ways that we, or at least that I was trying to reconcile this question was that our two human characters, Nathan and Caleb, I think are definitely misogynists and work within, as you say, that sort of tech bro culture of of hard and soft misogyny. But we, where we struggled with was trying to make sense of the sort of the broader artistic vision that our, Alex Garland is offering. And Stephen had made, you know, I, I think a pretty trenchant argument that the the movie is at least as much about pornography as it is about sort of AI and the the potential dangers of technology run amok. And so I guess I I mean you can you can make the the argument for the the well, the thumbnail version. For yeah, the, if the, you want. these are lines that I that I think I've alluded to. I, I'm I'm really interested in trying to find out where where they are and where they where they're drawn and so forth. It's one reason we were so happy that that you agreed to speak with us today. But I, on on its face, Ex Machina is like a sort of updated Turing test mm. movie, and that's its kind of intellectual claim. And I, I see what you're saying. There's this feminist claim that mm. when well, the end the ga the guys are killed and the 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 woman escapes and kind of takes control of her own freedom. It is nonetheless a movie that's in which women are uniformly beautiful women, although they're not yes. uniform, they're actually in some sense, I don't mean to be offensive here, but kind of pornographic archetypes. In fact, I think the movie, the movie yeah. says that they're built from, <laughs> you know, right. Caleb's pawn search. Nathan clearly has a particular fetish in the, in the figure of Kyoko, who he makes as someone who can dance, can have sex, but can't speak. You know, it's essentially yeah. sort of pornographic sensibility. So these women are presented in states of undress. As, 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 as sort of controlled tools of men who view them through screens in sort of voyeuristic ways. And yeah. at one point, Ava comes across like a webcam girl, like, you know, uh, do, do you watch me on, on the webcam? Mm -hmm. so, and, and she says, some, you know, I like it. I, I like to think of it that way. And then there's a whole, there's the whole kind of embodied aspect where women's limbs are sort of detachable or, or replaceable, which, which seems to me to be a one way, one thing that pornography might be argued to do to women, which is to abstract from a whole woman and a whole yes. person and to turn people yes, into body parts, yeah. disembodied limbs, you know, presented for kind of viewing, yeah. viewing pleasure. Yeah, I, it, it, this film is, no matter how much it says, hey, we're showing you how how unfair this is and how misogynistic it is, it's still entirely a film made for the male gaze. It really, really is. You can't get away from that. And um, so that, that, I think, is where the, the misogyny creeps in. Um, but yes, it's, it's it, the, the, the cliches and the tropes around 
the gendered robots and the gynoid robots is very, very apparent. Is the, the a female robot portrayed in a sci-fi film is either a, a threat to men, <laughs> or, you know, it's, it's it's kind of there you go. It's just it's feminism distilled and ready to rise up and, and destroy all men, or it's the manic pixie dream girl type, which is you know we're here, hi, oh, we're here to show you how to be a, a, a true but human and how to love, and you know it's 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 one or the other. We very rarely get any kind of nuanced glimpse into portrayals of women that way. Yet the male robots tend to be the ones who are either, well, they're either killers or they've got killers with a good heart or they're tough and they're wise. And we see it reflected in technology. We see it in voice assistants where all the voice assistants were came out with default female voices, right? A subservient technology with a female voice. And only after pushback did we start seeing male voices being introduced. And yet when you want a computer to sound authoritative or you want IBM's Watson, you want it to sound learned, you give it a, a deep male voice. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and I, I wrote down some examples of you know p portrayals of AI in movies that that kind of might might make that gender point. So Hal 9000, you know, from 2001, male, hyper rational, is brought down oh, yeah. when, when he's introduced to emotion or paradox or, or he's kind of you know taken out of that very ster stereotypically, particularly in that time period, male kind of rationalistic mindset. Uh, Terminator, male, violent, muscular, <laughs> crucially with Arnie as well, sexless. I mean, it's, this only occurred to me, mm. when, you know, that the, we, yeah. the Terminator is a killer. The Terminator has no interest in sex, right? Like, it, oh. never, or, or his character, but, you know, never makes any even allusion. Roy Baddy from Blade Runner is not only violent and strong, but is that kind of revolutionary theorist. Female representations, Ava, Kyoko in Ex Machina, uh, Samantha in Her. Oh the, yeah, and a female Madding bot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As uh, Zora and Pris in Blade Runner, in contrast to to Roy Batty, their you know quote unquote basic pleasure models. Or and I, I think you mentioned this as well. Uh, Joy versus Joe in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. You know what's in Amanda Damas's character versus you know who who is subserve kind of presented as a nineteen fifties housewife and and yeah. equally naked versus Joe who is a, a you know a, a a man on on a quest to overthrow a corrupt kind of revolutionary order. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is it. The, the, the male depictions of robots very rarely have any kind of sexual um, use to them or are or, or meant to encourage any kind of desire. That's not their role in any of these films. I mean, the patriarchy is just harming everyone here with these depictions. 